Welcome to a special episode of The Bottom Line. I'm Ash Mehta, and we are covering the upcoming local elections taking place on Long Island, New York. We're speaking with all of the candidates that are up for re-election and are seeking seats for the first time and getting to know some of their issues and what it is that they hope to offer the constituents of Long Island. Um, in this regard, today we're talking with Mr. Joshua Lafazan, who is currently the Nassau County Legislator, District 18. Joshua, welcome to our show. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Um, um, before we get started, because Nassau County is so yes. uh, diverse and so large, the largest county in the United States, tell us um, what towns make up your district. Sure. So I'm privileged to represent District 18. Uh, it's basically northeast Nassau County. Sayasset, west to Roslyn, north to Bayville, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Oyster Bay and Locust Valley, uh, Glenhead, Matinicock, the Brookfields, Oyster Bay Cove, so mm -hmm. northeast Nassau County. And uh, I'm privileged to have the largest of the 19 districts and uh, put a lot of miles on my car, but uh, I'm blessed to represent such a wonderful district. Uh, the one, like you said, you have one of the largest uh, populations residing within your district. Um, you are also one of the youngest elected officials in this position. Tell us how you got started in local politics. Sure. So at 23, I became Nassau County's youngest ever legislator, but uh, this wasn't my first foray into politics. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, as a senior in high school, mm -hmm. I got elected to the Syosset School Board of Education. Mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly, I ran because the superintendent of a school district of 6,000 kids made more money than the president of the United States. The wow. deputy superintendent of a school district of 6,000 kids mm -hmm. made more money than the president of the United States at a time when our teachers took a pay freeze. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the height of avarice. Uh, as a young person who was senior class president, I wanted to get involved and make a difference. Mm -hmm. The administration wasn't interested. So we decided to run for school board. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of teenagers. We were the scrappiest campaign you mm -hmm. ever saw. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no money and no organization. Uh, and all we had was grit and drive. And I got elected six weeks uh, before high school graduation, mm -hmm. um, elected in 2012, re-elected in 2015 and I'm proud to be serving my first term as legislator. And you are an independent. Uh, why the center of the aisle? Sure, so I'm the only independent of the 19 in the legislature, and, and I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. uh, why? This, this, is, this is why. I believe at the local level, potholes are not partisan. And mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? It means that the local issues we care about and the mm -hmm. issues I work on, protecting people with disabilities, mm -hmm. helping those that are suffering from drug addiction, making sure everyone has an equal voice in government, mm -hmm. uh, protecting our first responders. These are not partisan issues. Mm -hmm. uh, at the local level, government should be a place where everyone comes together and nobody gets left behind. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't think partisan politics has a role to play here. Uh, and I'm proud to, of my independent record. Like Tip O'Neill said, all politics are yeah, local. He was right. Um, tell us a little bit about, so this is your fifth term now that you're seeking re-election. So uh, first, first, first re-election in the legislator, but it's actually my seventh year in government. Very so I, nice. you know, I joked that uh, at 25, I'm more senior than many of my colleagues who have been yes. here for a few years. So. so tell us some of the things that you've been working on that you feel that you've had an, a special impact in. Sure. So first and foremost, I'm passionate about helping people suffering from drug addiction. Mm -hmm. 72,000 is the number of Americans who overdosed last year. Mm -hmm. To put that into perspective, that is a Vietnam War every single year mm -hmm. of individuals we're losing to a disease that is preventable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I passed two laws. Uh, first is Timothy's Law. It establishes a 24-hour hotline mm -hmm. where anybody suffering from drug addiction or anybody who needs information about substance abuse mm -hmm. can get somebody on the phone 24 hours a day. Okay. The way we paid for it is we took money from the drug dealers and we're putting it right back into treatment. I don't think there's anything better. Mm -hmm. The second is called Nassau Cares. And I ask all of your viewers, download this app on your phones right now. Mm -hmm. Nassau Cares. Mm -hmm. For the first time in our county's history, you can punch in your zip code mm -hmm. and it'll give you directions on your phone to the nearest treatment center. Okay. Resources are only as good as if people know they exist. Exactly. And I'm proud to use a millennial spirit using technology mm -hmm. uh, because we can't fight a 21st century battle using 19th century technology. Agreed, absolutely. Um, you also work with vets. Tell us about I that. I do. So in the richest county in the nation, Nassau County, we have 5,000 veterans, 5,000, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. who are either homeless or soon to be homeless or housing insecure. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, there are few things you can do in this life as noble as serving this nation. Uh, when you come home, we should fight as hard for you as you fought for us. Mm -hmm. So I passed a law. It's called the Dignity for Our Heroes package. Mm -hmm. And we have a commission right now where we're actually going to build housing and put a roof over the head of every homeless vet in Nassau County. And I think we're going to do it next year. So uh, delivering for a population that deserves our, our, our service and care. Absolutely. And good luck to you in that regard. Um, so coming up in this election, what do you hope to do should you win this seat? Sure. So again, uh, if I'm lucky enough, and, and, and I believe as long as we execute our, our vision, 
I'll be reelected on November 5th to a two-year term. Mm -hmm. uh, I have many more bills that I want to work on. Uh, our work is not done mm -hmm. in terms of addiction. Uh, heroin deaths have fallen, but I'm mm -hmm. tired of going to funerals, and I lost my fourth friend this month to drug addiction. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I will do whatever I can to make sure Nassau County is the battleground uh, in the fight against addiction. But mm -hmm. I also want to work in the mental health space. Mm -hmm. uh, it is difficult to be a young person today. Mm -hmm. uh, teen suicide is an epidemic, and I want to make sure young people in our county, and all people, mm -hmm. have access to mental health services. Uh, and I believe as a young person, I have a unique understanding uh, of the needs of our, our, our youth, and uh, I look forward to making a difference in that space. Um, you talk about mental health. I just read something recently that the suicide rate from the ages of 11 to 24 is up over 50 percent from 2009 to 2019. Sure. What specifically are you doing to address mental health? So I'm glad you asked. I filed a bill yesterday mm -hmm. and I'm hoping it's going to become law tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're having a heart attack, you're in immense distress and pain, but you know to do something very specific and crucial. Mm -hmm. Dial 911. Mm -hmm. If you are, are at risk of taking your own life, um, do you know off the top of your head the 10-digit suicide hotline? I don't. Mm -hmm. People don't. So what the FCC said is we need a 911 for the brain. Mm -hmm. I filed the bill yesterday to make Nassau County the first county in the state, mm -hmm. and I believe the nation, mm -hmm. to make 988 our suicide hotline. Okay. And I want a public service campaign to drill this number. Uh, I want this number programmed into the phone of every child, every adult, every parent, every teacher, every mm -hmm. coach, every civic leader. Uh, again, resources are only as good as if people have knowledge that they are accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope this is going to be nationwide, and I hope that bill passes with bipartisan support. You talk about bipartisanship. You are an independent. What do you do to get uh, cooperation and to work sure. with your colleagues across both sides of the aisle? Sure. So I think my so I passed ten bills. It's a record number of bills mm -hmm. as a freshman legislator. Mm -hmm. The reason I do that is because I believe my colleagues appreciate my earnestness, mm -hmm. my sincerity. Mm -hmm. I don't malign my colleagues ever, publicly mm -hmm. or privately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I take them on the issues, and and I don't use ad hominem attacks. If somebody disagrees. That is a very healthy part of democracy. Mm -hmm. I think politicians who are, uh, have been there for a little longer forget uh, that compromise is not a bad thing. Compromise is the foundation of the whole system. So when I come up with an initiative, mm -hmm. it's not about me getting the credit. I approach the other side. When I came up with my heroin and opioid bills, mm -hmm. I went to a Republican legislator, Laura Schaefer, and I said, let's co-sponsor. Mm -hmm. My food allergy bill, I went to Republican Howard Coppell, and I said, let's co-sponsor. Mm -hmm. My 988 bill, I went to legislator Arnold Drucker. I said, let's co-sponsor. I continue to lead the way mm -hmm. in putting people above politics. And I want to share, that's not new. Mm -hmm. In Syosset on the school board, I sponsored a bill that made Syosset the very first public school district to make Eid, Diwali, and Lunar New Year official district holidays. And after we got that done, school district after school district after school district followed. Mm -hmm. Because when you put people above politics, mm -hmm. uh, amazing things can happen. And again, when I say local politics is not partisan, mm -hmm. people at the local level do not care about political fights. Mm -hmm. They don't care if there's a D or your R next to your name. They care about quality are there, of life. That's exactly. Are the yeah. schools serving their kids? Yep. Are their communities safe? Do they feel welcome and do they feel like they have a voice? And passing that bill in Syosset was one of the proudest days of my life. Well, um, congratulations to you on that achievement. Mm -hmm. On a more candid level, sure. you are a freshman uh, in this game. Yes. Uh, you know, how do you navigate dealing with folks who have been uh, career politicians sure. who may not take you seriously, even if you have good ideas on sure. the table? So it's not easy. I joke that one of the, my, my friend's favorite Newsday articles was when the security guard wouldn't let me in the Capitol building because I didn't look old enough to be a legislator. <laughs> uh, that happens all the time. As a young person, you deal with consistent condescension. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I have degrees from Harvard and Cornell, mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, you know, you have to be more prepared on every issue. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're young, you have to work twice as hard with double expectations, mm -hmm. but I don't mind the challenge. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I'm not shy, mm -hmm. and as you can tell, my energy uh, is, is, is bountiful. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm so blessed to serve and, and to be where I am, so whatever I have to do to serve my constituents, I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I look forward to rising in seniority, maybe becoming the chairman of a committee, mm -hmm. uh, having more, you know, more clout uh, within that legislature, mm -hmm. and uh, if I'm reelected, I, I, I can't wait to get back to work to the people. Well, good luck to you in this endeavor, and uh, you know, for all the young people out there, I think you send the right message that you can get involved and not That's to right. be intimidated. Um, in closing, what do you want to say directly to our viewers sure. about getting the vote out? Sure. So I've served since I'm 18 years old. My commitment to my constituents is not new and it's ironclad. Mm -hmm. Just because the president or Congress isn't up for election, mm -hmm. this election is still important. 
all these wonderful things that I believe I do for our community in terms mm -hmm. of helping vulnerable groups, right? Helping individuals with substance abuse, helping individuals, uh, you know, who are veterans who may find themselves, you know, homeless, helping people with disabilities. Uh, I lose my ability to do all of that should I not be in elected office. So my ask is this. I ask you to tell three friends that you listen to Josh Lafazan. Mm -hmm. You believe that he's earnest. You believe that he's sincere. Mm -hmm. You believe he represents our community with integrity. Mm -hmm. You're voting for him and you ask them to vote for him as well. It's a solid message, Josh. We wish you all the best of luck at this upcoming election. Once again, this is a special coverage of the local elections taking place on Long Island, New York. This has been a special broadcast of The Bottom Line. Thank you for watching. We will keep bringing you this uh, very important messaging from these folks who are uh, doing good work out here. And uh, we hope you will get something out of this, but thank you for watching. Welcome back from break. You're watching The Bottom Line. I'm Ashmeta. This is our ongoing coverage of the local elections taking place in Long Island, New York at the end of the month. Um, as you all know, we've been speaking with all of the different individuals that are up for re-election or seeking a brand new seat um, as part of this race. Uh, now we're speaking with Ms. Ciela Bino, who is seeking re-election for the Nassau County Legislative seat. Um, Ms. Ciela, first of all, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Before we get started tell our uh, viewers what towns uh, what uh, cities your district encompasses yes legislative Dis district 2 encompasses Hicksville Westbury Newcastle mm -hmm. Uniondale Hempstead West Hempstead and also Lakeview and Rockville Center. Wonderful. So you are now seeking your fourth term as yes. uh, in, in this seat. So clearly you're doing something that the folks living in these areas uh, like. Tell us a little bit about some of your key uh, accomplishments in the last few years. Certainly. So I've really focused on investing in our communities, mm -hmm. protecting our families, mm -hmm. as well as trying to prepare our youth. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the infrastructure improvements that I've been working on will be across the district. Mm -hmm. We'll be uh, putting in $6.3 million into a streetscape mm -hmm. project that will enhance a state development, that redevelopment that's happening mm -hmm. in the village of Westbury. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we're going to be going out into Hempstead and improving the mm -hmm. uh, bus terminal. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, they've, they've been really suffering from some uh, persistent flooding in mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. So we have several million dollars that are set aside to address those issues. And then out on the southern part of the district, we will be doing some streetscape improvements out in the Malvern, um, sorry, the Lakeview, um, Rockville Center, West Hempstead area. Mm -hmm. um, a big part of your work uh, in this role has been addressing the opioid crisis taking place on Long Island, specifically in Nassau County. Tell us what you've done. So. I've been working on mental health first aid since mm -hmm. I first came to the mm -hmm. county. So when they started the opioid addiction committee, they asked me to co-chair along with the police commissioner, Patrick Ryder. Mm -hmm. And we worked collectively with a group of really well-versed experts in mm -hmm. addiction and also school mm -hmm. educators. Mm -hmm. And we came together with a consensus that we feel as um, that we need to do more on the preventative end. Mm -hmm that we are doing very well with treatment and and being able to address symptoms once they present once they present mm -hmm. but we'd like to do more preventative preventative so what we're looking at now is trying to help young people once they have experienced an adverse childhood trauma mm -hmm. and so we want to look at the traumas and we want to help the young people unpack these traumas mm -hmm. so that they have a more healthier way of dealing with the trauma mm -hmm. so that they don't look to self-medicate by way of using opioids or any other drug mm -hmm. or any engaging in any other high-risk behaviors mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and you've uh, co-chaired something in this regard yes so Nassau County had a, a, a county-wide committee mm -hmm. and we put together a report and we submitted that report to the county executive mm -hmm. about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And so now the, the work begins, right? Mm -hmm. um, we need to start bringing some of those initiatives mm -hmm. into, uh, uh, into ex existence mm -hmm. so that we can address these issues. We would like to see an opportunity to bring mental health first aid mm -hmm. into the schools. We'd like to be able to train 
personnel from each school district mm -hmm. in the train the trainer module mm -hmm. so that they could go back into the schools and train the teachers, the administrators, okay. the coaches, so that they could help address when a child might be experiencing mm -hmm. experiencing some level of trauma and then be able to, if they need to, de-escalate in the immediate mm -hmm. and then do a proper referral. Very nice. So, But it seems that it starts with identification of these high-risk individuals from the, the school administrators and staff and so forth. Absolutely. Um, so this is a little bit of what you've done and worked on, some of your key accomplishments. You are seeking another term. You're up for re-election. Um, tell us what it is that you hope to continue to do and uh, some new initiatives you might have planned. Yes, so aside from, you know, mental health first aid and doing the, you know, m some of the more capital improvements in the area, mm -hmm. I've also, I'm chair of Nassau County's Land Bank. Okay. And uh, it was created a couple of years back unanimously by the county legislature mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing the work of taking zombie properties or distressed properties mm -hmm. that are we can find them throughout Nassau County mm -hmm. and we're working towards rehabilitating those those properties uh, so that we could build homes for families that mm -hmm. would be looking for affordable housing on Long Island mm -hmm. so I'd like to continue some of that work in addition to that um, I'm looking at some environmental issues. We're mm -hmm. facing a, a crisis here on Long Island in terms mm -hmm. of our water, mm -hmm. both quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. So um, I have two initiatives that I'm working on mm -hmm. just now. We're crafting some legislation so that we can address some of those issues. You know, we're, we're on an island. We're tapping into an aquifer. Mm -hmm. This is, an, you know, not a, you know, a, this is a finite resource. Absolutely. So we need to make sure that we treat it as such and that we are using water sparingly. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to continue working on some of the water initiatives. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, um, I, I've been working very, very closely with our young people. I have mm -hmm. a robust um, internship program. Mm -hmm. I started out with interns the first year, maybe about four in my office, mm -hmm. and we've grown to eight per year. Okay. And as a matter of fact, one of my claims to fame is that one of my interns is now the deputy chief of staff for the Nassau County Legislature. Oh, so wow. I would like to continue to groom young people to mm -hmm. come up and work in our government. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, just really just have a basic understanding how government works mm -hmm. and know that it's accessible for them. Absolutely. Um, and in these initiatives, uh, how would you say, what sets you apart from your challenger? So aside from being uh, a legislator, mm -hmm. I'm also a, an executive director for the town of Huntington Housing Authority. Okay. So I am a pragmatic administrator. Mm -hmm. I can identify when there are issues in how we're delivering services. Mm -hmm. And I also, based on my training as a, a master of public administration, mm -hmm. I can work to resolve issues and s find solutions pretty readily. Mm -hmm. So I think that my 17 plus years in government and in, in delivering services, mm -hmm. being a direct service provider, mm -hmm. puts me in a unique position to be able to serve my constituency. Well, with that, I'd like uh, for you in closing to give a message directly to our viewers about how they can get the vote out. Great. So I would really help, I think that it would be very helpful if voters from across Nassau County make sure that people come out and vote. We're starting early voting here in New York State. This is the first time. And we would love if everyone would take advantage of the opportunity to vote early and to encourage others to do so as well. Mm -hmm. We, as I'm encouraging others to vote row A all the way across the um, Nassau County line so that Democrats can continue the hard work and the good work that we have been doing. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Ciela Bino, who is up for re-election for the Nassau County Legislative Seat District 2. Uh, once again, this has been a special episode of The Bottom Line. We are here in Long Island, New York, covering the upcoming local elections that are about to take place at the end of the month, with Election Day being November 5th. If you're a resident of Nassau County or elsewhere on Long Island, keep an eye out, stay informed. Uh, once again, this has been a special episode. Thank you for watching.